Hey guys, it's me, Johnny Crims 2000 here, and uh, this is just a very, very quick um, reaction video, reaction blog. I don't know what you call it. You guys have seen it before. I've done it on the PS4. I did it with uh, Goku vs. Superman, whatever. I'm doing one from, as you guys can tell for the title right now, about the E3 Xbox One uh, press conference that just finished up. It just wrapped up literally like 15 minutes ago. I decided to do this like you know just on the on a whim so I really just wanted to put it out there some of my thoughts uh, about what was talked about today at the uh, E3 uh, press conference for the Xbox one for starters if you guys have uh, kept up with my blog on screwtack.com you guys will know that I was very critical about the Xbox one's reveal uh, about a couple weeks ago and I was really looking forward to see how p they could have possibly made things better uh, today with the E3 uh, announcements their um, their announcements today so I'm just gonna talk about a couple things I'm not gonna talk about everything so if I don't talk about the game that you saw um, you know don't 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 get your uh, panties in a bunch um, it probably just means that I just don't remember like I said I literally just like finished watching this thing on spike um, 15 minutes ago so I may not remember everything I did write down some of my favorite stuff um, for starters is uh, before the actual event I was watching the pre-show and uh, Rare came out, and the big thing about it was that Rare was going to announce this big title um, that was, everybody was hyping it up, I, you know, what could it be, is it a new Banjo, a new Conquer, a new Killer Instinct, and they came out and, and they announced uh, Connect Sports, was it Rivals, I think it was, a uh, very Sonic sounding name, by the way, Sonic Rivals, you guys understand that, right? And uh, the Twitter, the Twitterverse, if you want to call it that, just exploded. Like, everybody was just like, man, F you, Rare. Because, <laughs> come on, let's face it, Rare, come on. Microsoft has this stupid decision to have Rare making Kinect games. First of all, Rare is a great company if you, gave them, if you give them a chance. They haven't been that great since they came over to Microsoft, but I think forcing them to do Kinect games is just like a, a really like a, a an uppercut in the nuts <laughs> to, like, all of Rare's fans. So... You know, that was that. I thought, you know what, I kind of expected them to announce some st stupid Connect game. I didn't think of it much. Um, I mentioned on Twitter, or, or I think I did, I'm not sure. I mean, I I, I don't like to Connect. I don't have a Connect for the 360. If I ever do get Xbox One, I'm not going to get it for the Connect games. I don't think any, you know, quote-unquote hardcore gamer ever does. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody really liked Connect to begin with. Um, so that's that. Connect Sports rival whatever the heck the name is eh it's all right although it did give us um the guy that was interviewed from rare did give us an indication that it was going to be uh the xbox one i think he leaked he leaked it out by mistake saying that the xbox one will be released in november now i'm going to get back to that a little bit later but uh, next up the actual uh press event started off with a huge announcement with the release or the announcement of uh, metal gear solid 5 uh which is being made exclusively for the xbox one now Personally, I love Metal Gear Solid. I, I wouldn't say that I am a huge, huge fan, but I love it because it, you know it's a classic. Let's let's face it, it's a classic. And um, I, I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 4. I actually do have it for my PS3. I never played it. I haven't because I told myself I'm gonna beat the first three before I get to Mega Metal Gear Solid 4. I'm just that kind of gamer. Um, but I, you know, this Metal Gear Solid 5 showed and it looked incredible. The graphics, obviously being the first game off, you know, being shown and stuff like that with in-game in footage was just amazing. The graphics look incredible. Um, Gameplay-wise, it looks pretty cool. The big thing about this one is that it will be a uh, free roam, uh, you know, sandbox type of game, and you'll be hearing that a lot with uh, most of the games on this um, that were mentioned today. Um, I mean, really, everything that was mentioned in the in the footage it looked amazing you know solid uh solid snake is back i think it's solid snake snake is back um and you know which i don't think it makes sense because it wasn't metal gear solid 4 supposed to be the last one but uh, whatever um companies want to make money i guess but yeah metal gear solid 5 i'm i'm excited i liked it i liked the video it looked awesome i like i love the fact that they showed actual gameplay instead of just some trailer which, um, in my opinion, you some of you may disagree, but I am never impressed when it's just a trailer that does not show any footage. Um, like, I want to see footage. I don't want to see no stupid trailer that's been worked over and it only shows, like, cutscenes and stuff like that. Because, 
Um, I mentioned it before. A lot of times, I play games for the gameplay. I don't play them because it's some dumb story that I'm, you know, yeah, it's like, you know, track, you know, it's a good story and like the voice actors and stuff like that. Whatever. I, I play games for the games. Um, so I'm really glad that this that Metal Gear Solid Five showed off gameplay and it looked fun. It really did. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, next up, uh, I'm going by no 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 kind of no kind of order. By the way, I'm just naming the games that I remember. Uh, next up is Rise, which is a launch title for the Xbox One. Rise is at at first it it kind of made it out. It's like Roman, um, this Roman game. Uh, you guys can see the trailer for it. I'm probably you know I'm butchering up explaining exactly how this game is, but oh well. Uh, it's basically just this action game. Uh, you're like a Roman soldier or something like that. And honestly, when I first saw the trailer starting, I thought, oh, this is probably going to be like Microsoft's equivalent to God of War. And it actually didn't turn out that way. This one is more realistic. It's I, I don't want to say it's bloodier, but it's more realistic. Um, the battles in the game look incredible. Like the, the scope of the battles and the scale of everything like just looks awesome. Um, the fighting mechanics looked, eh, they're all right. Um, there's some quick time events here and there. There is this cool thing, uh, feature of the game that I saw where you can call up your soldiers. You're like the leader of the your your soldier, whatever, your army. And uh, you call upon them and you line up. And then at a certain point in the, in the footage that they showed, you had your, um, like the entire group just cover up with their shields because the, their arrows were coming towards them. And I thought that was a pretty cool little gimmick thing. Not exactly sure how that would work, how fun that would be to use, but you know it's unique. I liked it. Um, overall, though, the rise, um, I'm interested, but honestly, the Roman time period is n was never really one of my favorite. the The fighting mechanics looked a bit meh to me uh, at some points, but uh, who knows? You know, this may end up being one of my favorite games if I ever end up getting an Xbox One. Um, there's reasons why I may not, and I'll be getting to those a little later. But anyway, that was Rise. Uh, next up, they showed off a new Battlefield 4 Battlefield game. Um, now, I'll be the first to say right off the bat, I am not a Call of Duty Battlefield kind of guy. I hate those games. I, I shouldn't say I hate those games, but they just seem so meh to me. Especially Call of Duty. If you're a Call of Duty fan and you're on my channel and you're watching this video, I'm sorry. But um, I just don't like them. Like, they're too, they're too realistic for my taste and uh, you know they're action packed as all get out especially this footage from the new Battlefield 4 but uh, I don't know I, I, I never liked the, the you know stereotypical soldier games like this especially Call of Duty God you know new Call of Duty every year come on you guys can't tell me that it hasn't gotten boring at this point I had like the only Call of Duty game I have is Call of Duty 4 and I and I've never finished it because I got bored um, but anyway, this is not about Call of Duty. This is about Battlefield 4. It looks good. The graphics look amazing. Um, from what I heard, a couple people on Twitter, it looks better than the Call of Duty footage. Um, if you want to know about that, I honestly can't remember. Um, like I said, it, it all looks the same to me. No kind of creativity whatsoever. Um, but it looks fun. Uh, I really, I mean, the, the, the most exciting part of the whole thing was uh, the fact that, well... From the in-game footage, the most exciting part of the whole thing was that there was an emphasis on, um, how, how should I put it? There was an emphasis on the gravity, the the physics engine, because it's, at one point, uh, the guy that was playing the game, and it was actual in-game in footage, which I liked, uh, at, at one point, the guy was fighting off with his, uh, his, his peeps or whatever. He was fighting off, and uh, there was some guy shooting him off to, off to the distance, and the the setting was like a destroyed battleship or something and off to the side there was like a jet that was leaning and he he blew up something around it and the jet started sliding towards the en his enemies and it took them all out so that seems a little interesting I, I guess um, but the most important thing about this release about this trailer was that there was such a big like you know screw up on the part of the pre uh, you know the presenters and stuff like that it was so awkward. You'll probably hear this in the coming days. There, there will be, I predict, there will be articles and um, and stuff like that made about this. Basically, it had already happened uh, before with uh, Crimson Dragon, which I will be talking about um, footage. But there was no sound throughout the first uh, attempt 
at Battlefield 4. When they first showed off the video or whatever, the presenter, uh, forget his name, it's not important, um, he was like, alright, here's the footage of Battlefield 4. And there was no sound. Like, absolutely nothing. At first, I thought, like, okay, you know, you know, silent start for dramatic effect. And then, you know, you saw the footage, and there was no sound. And it was like, oh, this is a screw-up. This is, the, you know, second time today, but this one's even bigger, because the guy was just standing up up there. He did not know what to do. And he he it, it sounded to me like he started getting heckled by the guy, you know, the people in the crowd and stuff like that. I mean, these are gamers. You have to expect their, you know... They're a little irritating and stuff like that, especially with the Xbox One. Um, and it got just so awkward because the poor guy was just up there, and there were you know people booing. And at one point, one guy was like silent, <laughs> as if that was gonna make you know people be uh, settle down and stuff like that. At least with the Crimson Dragon footage, which also didn't have sound, and it actually went all the way through without no sound. At least with that footage, there was nobody on stage. Uh, to heckle, but this one, poor guy, poor EA, the guy, you know, eventually it did work, um, so it went smoothly, a at one point he was actually like, well, I guess you're just gonna have to see it later, um, which I assumed was like, oh, they're just giving up, <laughs> which just make things even worse, but that, uh, that was the most interesting part of the whole thing, in my opinion, I'm sorry if you're a Battlefield fan, but I'm not, so I can say that, <laughs> um, Next up, we have a new Halo game, and I thought that this was actually very, very well done. I'm a huge Halo fan. I think that's more interesting than Call of Duty. Honestly, you can argue about the gameplay, but setting and story and character-wise, you, you know, you can't really argue. Halo just owns uh, Battlefield and Call of Duty as far as creativity and imagination. So I was interested. Still haven't gotten Halo 4, by the way, but I don't know exactly if this is a new, you know, if this is Halo 5 or another kind of Halo. Um, it showed Master Chief, so I'm, gu I'm guessing it's Halo 5. Um, which, by the way, it's like way too freaking early to release it, but, you know, oh well. Um, the footage of it, the trailer, you guys can go check it out. I'm not going to explain everything, but the way that they did it was very clever because at the beginning, I didn't even know it was a Halo game. It was Master Chief in a cloak, and I thought, oh, you know, you know let's see where this goes. And I was really expecting, like, a new IP. And at the end, he, you know, there was like a big explosion or whatever. Um, actually, it was like a shockwave or something with a big monster. You'll see it. Go check out the trailer. And it, it takes off his hood, and it just, like, Master Chief right there. And I'm like, holy crap, that was awesome. Because I did not see that coming. So, aside from that, that was just a trailer. It was just footage. Um, no gameplay footage whatsoever. But it was a nice reveal. It was, it was a pretty good, um, nice job. Uh, I almost called him Bungie. Is it 343 Studios? You know, like I said, I haven't played Halo 4, so I don't, I'm not r familiar with them yet. Um, but yeah, new Halo coming out 2014, I think. It won't be for launch, which is sad times, but, you know, I, I mean, I still haven't gotten Halo 4, so, I, you know, I don't mind waiting. Uh, next up is Titanfall, and Titanfall was, in my opinion, the, you know, the dark horse of the whole thing, at least for me. I hadn't heard nothing about this game. Uh, that's, you, that's the way I usually do it. I don't read anything about it. I don't read previews, sneak previews, leaks, or anything like that. So that when it actually is announced, you know, I'm that much more uh, impressed. And let me tell you guys, Titanfall looks to be the game to look out for, in my opinion, um, because it is very impressive. Um, it is yet another shooter, um, which I'm not a big fan of. I wish people would just, God, be more creative, people. Can you not make a game, a big blo uh, blockbuster game that has no guns? But um, Titanfall looked really good. Apparently, it's made by some of the guys that may worked on Call of Duty, which eh, don't know what to think about. But the premise is amazing. You basically uh, are a pilot, and you have some sort of jetpack. So in the game, you're allowed to do double jumps. Um, if you guys ever played Gun Valkyrie, it really reminded me of that uh, from Sega for the original Xbox. If you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you have a jetpack, it allows you double jump, and you also allow a little bit, like, of wall jumping and stuff like that, so you can, like, double jump onto a wall, run on the wall, double jump off that wall onto another wall, wall run on that, and then you can get off to, like, a higher ledge or something. It's amazing. And, um, it looks to be a lot of fun to, like, walk around doing that stuff in-game. And the other thing is that you have what's known as, as Titans, I think that's it, which are basically just mechs. And, uh, you can call upon these Titans at any time, or, I think after a, a set time limit, if I if I heard the interviews and stuff right, and uh, you can get inside the mech and you can just wreak havoc and you can get outside the mech and I think uh, the mech is yours so nobody else can steal it and while you're outside the mech I think it's like it's like on autopilot or something if I saw the footage right 
because uh, the pilot was outside the mech, and the mech kept shooting. So, I don't know what to make of that. But it looks incredible, looks a lot of fun. Um, that's definitely a game that I would love to check out. Um, so that's Titanfall. I'm really impressed by that. I, I, I really was. Uh, so now we get to Dead Rising 3, which is another game by Capcom. Obviously the third game in the series, I believe. Um, and uh, it actually, I actually haven't played much of Dead, uh, Dead Rising. But the one thing I will say about this is um, Dead Rising 3 looks to be, to me, the first impression that I got is, um, oh, by the way, it's a free roaming. Like I said, you would hear that a lot. So it's, it's a free roaming game. Um, so Metal Gear Solid 5 isn't the only one that's jumping over to, you know, the free roaming realm, I guess. Um, free roaming game. Obviously, if you don't know about Dead Rising, it's about zombies. Eh. Don't know what to think about that, but whatever. I think zombies are way overrated, in my opinion. Um, but it's a Dead Rising game, so it, it looks like it's fun. The only thing, the only gripe that I had is that it, it's starting to look a little too much like Resident Evil. It's a little bit grittier than the previous two Dead Rising games, in my opinion. Um... And I didn't like that, because that was the thing that made Dead Rising at least a little bit original, was that it had a little bit of humor. Um, you know, you, you would see, like, him, uh, Frank West, pulling out, uh, like, the, the serve bot heads and, you know, Mega Man costumes and stuff like that. We didn't see any of that in this game, so I don't know what to think. Um, it's getting to be a little bit too serious, at least that's what the footage suggested, so we'll see about that. If you're interested in Dead Rising, there you go, Dead Rising 3. I think exclusive to Xbox One. At least that's what I think. And uh, next two games, last two games that I'll talk about today. I'm, if, uh, if I didn't talk about the game that you liked, then I'm sorry. <laughs> but these are the games that I liked. Starting off with uh, Crimson Dragon. Crimson Dragon is a game that was made, I think, by the same guy that made Panzer Dragoon. And I am a huge Panzer Dragoon fan. I think that it is a hugely, hugely, is that a word? Underrated game series by Sega. Um, but this, this, eh, this isn't by Sega, it's by another developer, but it's basically the same thing. And here's the thing, guys, like, every other game, you know, all these games, and pretty much most of them, like, 90% of these things are shooters, and I'm just like, oh, another shooter, another shooter, another shooter, no creativity whatsoever. And here comes uh, Crimson Dragon, which is basically, in my opinion, I would, I'm just going to call it like a spiritual successor to Panzer Dragoon. And what... <laughs> And, like, the footage ends up, like, conking out because we saw the trailer but absolutely no audio. What the frick? And it looked amazing. You know, the, the, the visuals and stuff like that looked awesome. It looked just like a Panzer Dragoon game. And I was just like, holy crap, this is like a spiritual successor to Panzer Dragoon. I can't wait to get my hands on this. But we didn't get any audio. But whatever. It, it looked awesome. I can't wait to get a chance to play it. Love me some Panzer Dragoon. And this game looks just as good. Um, for a next-gen game. We haven't seen a Panzer Dragoon game since Panzer, uh, Panzer Dragoon Orta for the original Xbox. So this looks amazing. And finally, the biggest news, in my opinion, for this entire Xbox press conference is that we're finally getting a Killer Instinct 3, mofos. Like, finally. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier about how the Twitterverse had exploded because Rare said that uh, Rare had made this big deal that they were going to reveal, uh, you know, that they were going to make a new game in a very popular series, and the first thing that they, that they mentioned in the pre-show was the new Kinect game, which everybody was just mad at. Like, they just pissed off, like, to no end. And then we finally got the news that we wanted in the new Killer Instinct 3. They didn't show almost anything of it. They, in fact, when they first announced it, it was just like a quick 10, 15 second little, you know, crappy trailer, not even trailer thing. And I was just like, at first I was just like mad, because it's like, okay, you can spend like 10 freaking minutes showing Metal Gear Solid 5, and then here's a game that everybody wanted, that's been waiting since the Nintendo freaking 64, and you give it only 15 seconds. Like, okay, whatever. Fortunately, though, uh, later on when they were explaining how live can, uh, works or some stupid thing with, like, Twitch, um... They did mention they did show off more footage of Killer Instinct 3, and it looks pretty good. It, it looks a little bit like Street Fighter 4, um, not so much the graphics, but I, I think that the font of of the titles and stuff like that looks a little bit like Street Fighter 4. Um, it looks good. It's a 2D game, thank God. Um, if they made it 3D, I would have just punched them in the gut. Um, the only characters that we saw were, I believe, J. Joe. Or Jago, forget how how you say his name. Uh, werewolf, not werewolf. 
Oh my god, I forgot his name. <laughs> the wolf guy. Oh my god. I'm sorry guys, I should know this. Um, and Glacius. We didn't see, as far as I can remember, B Orchid, Cinder, or B Thunder, um, or anything like that. So, god, I hope I remember those names right. But anyway, we're getting a Killer Instinct game. That's the best thing, and you know, the best news in the entire thing. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't go into any detail, but, you know, screw it. We, we're finally getting a Killer Instinct 3. It's freaking amazing, and I can't wait. Uh, I hope you guys are getting excited as I am because fighting games are back, bitches. And we're f and this is you know this is a game that I've been looking forward to the most. So I'm glad that they finally mentioned mentioned that. And uh, last bef uh, but not least, before I end this little audio blog thing, um, they finally mentioned more details as to the release of the Xbox One. It's coming out in November, and it's coming out for 499 US dollars. Holy crap, Batman! That's a lot of money. And uh, Needless to say, I'm not going to be getting an Xbox One anytime soon because I'm broke as a joke. I am just finished college, and I don't have a job yet. But if you do, if you are able to get 499 US dollars, 499 US dollars, 409 US dollars, then good, good for you. Uh, so you know, my advice: if you don't have the money now, start saving up so that you can have enough um, by November, so you can get it. Um, but uh, anyway, my thoughts on that. You know, I knew it was going to be expensive. It's it's always it always is. Um, let's just wait for what Sony have to say or Sony has to say on how much that uh, the PS4 is, and I think then I will kind of have a closer opinion or more of an opinion about the prices of these new machines. I mean, after all, I mean we're kind of used to. They ma they made a good point on G3, uh, yeah, G3 GT as to you know. Consumers nowadays are kind of used to paying all that much, especially with the Apple products. So something like $499 for Xbox One nowadays doesn't seem all that big of a deal. But it's still a big deal, especially for guys like me, you know, uh, no job, at least not right now, or at least fresh out of college. So we're not strapped for cash right now. But um, yeah, my opinion about the Xbox uh, press conference so far is that they avoid it. The controversies, which in my opinion was a huge mistake because now gamers are left in this really confusing mess as to, you know, yeah, we, we saw all these awesome games and we love to play them, but crap, man, we still have to deal with all the, you know, all this bull crap about, you know, all the, the limitations and restrictions that the Xbox One has. So it puts us in a very awkward position where it's like, do we suck it up and pay all the money and go through all this bull crap? just to play the awesome games or do we stand by you know our morals if you call them that and um, not get the Xbox one but at the same time we're missing out on all these cool games so um, I'm still fighting that you know maybe I'll make an article post it on screwattack.com uh, put it on more details so you guys can check it out later I'll make an announcement for it if you want um, but until then I'm really kind of like I don't know I think they did make a mistake by not uh, you know by not uh, making that at least a small announcement, you know, with the with the DRM uh, restrictions and stuff like that, not being able to share your games, that you know, the being locked out if it's more than ten family members and stuff like that, the twenty four hour have to be connected. They didn't, they mentioned none of that, so that's still a problem in my opinion. They didn't uh, they didn't talk about it, so that's still you know it's still up in the air. But uh, yeah. That's it for this. Uh, what do you guys think? What was your uh, impressions on the Xbox One press conference today at E3? Um, let me know in the comment section. Be sure to like, subscribe, and all that good jazz. And I will see you guys later. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Which one's your favorite games? Do you like the Xbox One? Are you getting it now? Or do you, do you think it still sucks? Let me know. All right, see you guys later. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to get more stuff from me. In the meantime, if you like my videos, be sure to find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Raptor, and ScrewAttack.com to see the other gaming-related content that I upload. Info is in the description. Who knows? Maybe you'll like my stuff. Maybe? Maybe?